This flashlight is $120 and this one is 20. Is it really worth $100 more? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Let me let me see if you can figure out what we're gonna talk about today. Oh wait, we got a ton of flashlights here in front of us. I guess we're gonna talk about flashlights. You know, in living in this van life, uh, especially if you're a boondocker, you're out in the dark, you're away from civilization, you're in the, you know, you step out of the rig at night, you hear something out there and you go out there to look around, having a good flashlight is so important. And I lived in Alaska for over 40 years. And Alaska is dark six months out of the year. <laughs> I mean, literally six months out of the year, it's dark. In fact, uh, in the darkest part in Anchorage, when I would go to drive to work in the morning at eight in the morning, it'd be dark. When I drove home from work at five in the afternoon, it would be dark. And I was in my workplace and I never saw the sun because I was at work. And so I know all about the importance of a flashlight and flashlights have become so much better than they've ever been before. They've also become a whole lot more expensive than they ever have been before. The cheapest of these flashlights here was about $20, $25. The most expensive of these flashlights here was over $200. Is it worth all that extra money to get that extra flashlight. So this flashlight is $120 and this one is 20. Is it really worth $100 more? I don't know, we're gonna find out. So flashlights are really important. It's really important that we you have one, a good one, and the cheapest one probably is not the one. I would guess the majority of you have a flashlight in your rig that barely puts out much light. When you step out of your rig at night, you really can't see very far or very much because you don't give flashlights a lot of thought. I think they're really important. If you have a pet, like I have always had a pet, you know, if your dog's out at night, your cat gets out at night. Um, I go for a walk uh, every evening at sunset. It's, it's my ritual. I am out uh, just before sunset and I always have a flashlight, a good flashlight in my pocket so that if I get delayed, I have to get home in the dark, my flashlight will get me home in the dark. If I, if I hear something go make a noise at night, say uh, there's something I'm thinking about the rig and I wanna go see, I want a good flashlight. I don't wanna step out into semi-darkness and see a little tiny bit right in front of me. I wanna illumine the whole area. I really do. Yep. But do you really have to spend over $200 for this flashlight? And I'll, clue, I'll give you a, uh, a preview here. No, you do not wanna spend $200 on this flashlight because this flashlight is a spotlight. If you have some reason you need to see something half a mile away, this flashlight's well worth $200. It's worth every single penny. 90, how often are you gonna need to see something half a mile away? Probably not very often. And if, if all you're gonna do is step out your rig and look right around you, this is actually a very poor flashlight. So there are two main functions you want to happen out of a light. The first is a flood. That's the area right here. You can see uh, within a normal walking distance, you know, your, your peripheral vision sees everything, but you're focused in a pretty small area. I want this area flooded. That's a floodlight. And then there's what this light does. It throws a long pencil beam. So I, when I go out and look around, I am seeing kind of the right in here. This is what I'm focused in. And then if there's something makes noise or I'm interested in or I'm looking for my dog or I hear a coyote and I wanna see what that, sound, what that is way over there, then I will focus my eyes and I lose, I'm seeing it, it's in my peripheral vision, but I'm focused out there. So you need those two things, focused out there for when you need to be focused out there and broad area in here 
which is what you're going to do 99% of your time. If I just want to walk out and see right around me, this flashlight works perfectly. Um, in fact, this flashlight will work perfectly for a really like 10 or 15 feet around me. I can see perfectly well. So my point is you want to get a flashlight that does what you need. Mostly a good flood and then as far out as you can go. So that's the next thing, how much light. And they've got a lumen race going in their advertising. Some of these things are advertising like 10,000 lumens or 90,000 lumens. Well, it's all nonsense. Um, and we're going to actually set up a test and test how far can you see practically with, uh, with one of these flashlights. We'll do a, I think I've got a really good pl test planned and you'll be impressed. So you know that if you spend $20, you can see everything you need to see. You don't need to spend the 200 or even the 100. So next, I think one of the things I'm really looking for is because I want these two areas. I want to be able to focus out there at a distance, but I also need to be able to see broadly here in this flood. I need a good solid flood always, but sometimes, occasionally, I want to see far out. Well, some of these little flashlights come with a zoomable end. So this one turns, and as it turns, it goes out, and it focuses. It, it just focuses the light further out. So I got a good flood, which I need most of the time, and I've got a somewhat good spot, which I need occasionally. And so focusable is a really important issue with all of these things. The next issue for me with a flashlight is the user interface. You think, Bob, they're flashlights. How can there be a user interface? Believe you me, there is a user interface. I have picked some of these things up and decided I'm not going to read any of the manuals for them. And I've played with them for half an hour and still couldn't figure them out. And finally, I read the manual and I could understand it. But I don't want to have to read the manual to know how to turn on a flashlight. So this flashlight does nothing. Now, this one... Uh, does nothing but on off, okay? Uh, it, it's really simple. There's not no steps, there's not turbo, there's not quadruple low, there's not blinking, it's just on off. And so that's, uh, that's a user interface that I can easily, pretty easily handle. And I have some of them that have multiple buttons and that really makes life easy. This, this Olight Warrior has now got multiple buttons. It's got a button at the end that makes it come on and it's got a side button that uh, controls the, the volume. And so this is really getting up there in complication. You've got two buttons, and one of the buttons does, it shows you the status of the battery and moves it through the, it's, this is probably the most complicated one of all. Um, so the user interface is pretty important to me because I want, I usually want to have high, medium, low, and that's it. If it has high, medium, low, I'm gonna be pretty happy. The most single most important thing about choosing one of these flashlights is the battery. And the first most important thing about the battery is, is it rechargeable? I love these rechargeable flashlights. That means you plug in a USB, any USB, off of any USB charger, and off your, off your laptop, off of a, if you have a wall adapter, off of anything. A battery bank, you can charge it into a battery bank, you can carry a battery bank around with you. Um, they're charged by USB. And then it comes to full, you uncharge it, they've got their own battery, they last a long time. And so it, I'm looking for a good battery, a, a lithium battery that lasts a long time. And I'm not even going to recommend any of the AAs or AAAs. I, got, I, have, a, I have a set here as a, a comparison, but I'm just not going to recommend them. In fact, if I, I didn't buy any that weren't rechargeable, other than the, those two is a, a low ball standard. They're cheap, they're really cheap because these rechargeable batteries are far better and more expensive, but that's, uh, you want that battery to be rechargeable. You want it to be a good battery. So the best battery right now is the 18650, and they're universal, they're common, you can just buy them anywhere. Uh, they recharge really well, they got a good, perfect amount size. Some of them are much bigger. This has the 24 or something, 24570, something like that. It has two of those, and they're enormous. Oh, this one doesn't even come out. So there's something, another question. Can you replace the battery? So all these batteries have a limited lifespan. Uh, they're not going to last forever. They're going to last a couple of years, and they're going to start to diminish. And then after three, they'll diminish some more. And by four, there's nothing left. Well, if the battery is not replaceable, it doesn't come out, 
then you're throwing the whole thing away. This is not replaceable. Uh, this is an over $200 flashlight, but when this battery goes, you throw it away. On the other hand, this battery is replaceable. You just unscrew the back. You pull it out. This goes bad, you throw it away. And this is a 21700. This is 5,000 milliamp hours. If you chart watch batteries at all, 5,000 milliamp hours is a very powerful, long lasting battery. So uh, you, one of the things you want is the battery to be replaceable. But because it's got this great big battery and it's expensive and the charger's more expensive because the battery's more expensive, it starts to come become much more expensive. This one has the two buttons, you're paying more for that. Uh, a lot of things, why, and it throws a really good light. One of the things you can look for out of a battery uh, is interchangeability, and that's unique. Out of all the flashlights I bought, only one does that. It has an, uh, re, uh, an internal battery that is replaceable, but when you take it out, it also comes with a cartridge that holds triple A's. So if that battery runs dead, you can take it out and put in triple A's, or you could just run triple A's if you had a lot of them lying around. I don't like triple A's because you just never know when they're gonna die on you. So one of the things I do is I go out for a half hour walk every evening, right at dusk. And the battery it can seem full, but uh, I can be out for 20 minutes on my way back and all of a sudden it's weaker and weaker and weaker and I walk home in the dark. That's what happens with the triple A's. Eventually, unless you throw them away early or, or double A's, yeah, they're going to die on you and they're going to die slowly and then all of a sudden they're not going to work and if you're out depending on it, you're in the dark. Whereas with the rechargeables, I'll go out for a week or two and I'll learn the flashlight and I know it will last me a month of hikes. Well, after two weeks, I'll just put it in the charger and it'll be 100%. So USB re uh, rechargeable is really important. One of the things I look for is what kind of uh, USB. They're almost all micro. Uh, USB micros. And those little things are hard to work with. I don't like the micros. Uh, some of the better ones are USB-C's, the newer ones, the more expensive one. That's one of the things you're buying. You're buying a USB-C charger. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Some of these are in the weirdest places. The worst one, I think, is this. The, the, you have to undo the back, pull this off, and the charging port is underneath it. Well, I'm gonna break this cable eventually. I know I am. It, it's not a deal breaker for me, and for 20 bucks, this still is a good flashlight, but it's weird. So those are the kinds of things uh, I want you to know when we're done with this series. Now, let me talk to you about uh, one of the US, how the recharging on these Olights. They use a magnetic proprietary charger. They don't exist anywhere else in the world. They'll give you one when you buy the flashlight, you lose that, you're out of luck. You can't charge it till you go to them and you buy another one of their proprietary chargers. On the other end, it's USB, but on this end, it's magnetic on the cap. I really dislike that. Uh, that's a deal breaker for me. I want them all to charge off a USB micro or a USB-C. Um, this is a fantastic flashlight. $120, but to my mind, that's kind of a deal breaker for me and I've stopped buying Olights because I don't want this proprietary thing hanging around in my life. Finally, let's talk about tactical. Uh, a flashlight can be a part of your self-defense. This is the Olight Warrior and it is an excellent tactical flashlight. A couple of things you want out of a good tac tactical flashlight is it's very bright. You want it to shine in the person's eyes and blind them. That's the goal. You want it to have a thumbnail on off switch so that if I hold it up like this and shine it at you, I, when I hit the button, it goes off. I'm blinding you, I let go and I move. So it's on and off really fast. Every, just I push the button, it's on and then it's off. And I'm moving and I'm blinding you as I'm moving. So that makes it a tactical, and you want to kind of hold it like this as a weapon, and you can hold it out here if they're shooting, if they're throwing things, uh, you hold it out here, and you blind them with it, and then you move in the dark, because they're temporarily blinded. So he's standing there kind of stunned, and you're moving, and if he's going to eventually get to you, you want him to have knurls on the end, and uh, this one has really, really, really good knurls, and man, it 
it just doing that is unpleasant. I will stop doing that because it hurts. And I can't imagine someone hitting me in the head with this thing. If I could get a blow like this onto somebody's head, man, that would really, really hurt. So that's the idea behind tactical flashlights. And this Warrior is an exceptional, it's by far the best. Some of them are kind of knocking around and pretending being flashlights, being uh, tactical flashlights, but this Warrior is a really good one. But You can see the Olight Warrior is really, really, really spectacular. Look at all that light. Look at all that light. Man, it's a great flood and it's a fantastic spotlight. That's by far the best I can see her. Okay, so this is the Olight Warrior off and that's the anchor, no, the, I mean the coast. Again, the coast is a $58 flashlight, the Olight Warrior is $120, but it's spectacular. Look at all that light. My goodness gracious. I can see her. You guys can't see it. I know you can't really see her. Uh, she's clear to me. I would spot her. She one, more in the, uh, one more light we want to test. This is the, <laughs> okay, this should be the, the mo monster of the mall. It is. This is the, uh, oh my, that is just a amount, huge amount of light. That's a lot of light hitting you, isn't it, Linda? Yes. You, it lights up your world. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not even the beginning of, of what we can see. If she were out there another 100 feet, we could easily spot her. I imagine you. she's tiny for you guys. but So this is the, the Olight Javelin. It's not a good flood. If I point it down, I got a, a, a hot, really hot, bad hot spot. It's a terrible flood, but my goodness. That is a spotlight and a half. This last flashlight is the XHP90, and they claim 90,000 lumens. <laughs> I love how they do that. 90,000 lumens, which is just ridiculous. Okay, now we're comparing it to the Warrior. Now the Warrior is by far the best light. Oh, that's too bright. See, that's a hot spot. As a spot, this is a far better spot, this XHP90. Because this is too bright and the flood's okay, but the hot spot is bad. And when I come down to see my feet, I get a hot spot. That's bad. Can I walk by that? One of the things that helps is if you put your put the light low. And so now I don't have a hot spot, but I got a lot of shadow. If I put the light up here, I don't know if you can see me. If I put the light up here, now I got this hot spot in my eye. So if you got anything out of this video, and I hope you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.